Hi, my name is John Harding and in this video we're going to have a look at a range of different techniques that you might be able to use to capture a native freshwater fish. So let's have a look at what sort of options we've got available. Our first method is using a kick net, the same sort of net that we would use for benthic invertebrate sampling. This is a typical sort of riffle in a braided river complex in Canterbury in the South Island. And what we're going to do really is have a look over on the far side of this riffle in the slower water where there's uh, boulders, still reasonable sized boulders, some of them sticking out. And this is where we might expect to see some of the smaller native fish hanging out during the daytime. There will be uh, faster species out here so we might typically expect to see some torrent fish out here and possibly uh, bluegill bullies. This kick net method involves placing the kick net uh, directly behind a largest boulder so that when you lift the boulder up any fish uh, resting under there will swim straight into the kick net. This is a much better looking boulder, it's actually got some fast water upstream and then at the downstream end of the boulder We've actually got a little bit of a pool here, so this looks like a much better site to see if we can catch some fish. And in fact, under that boulder we actually did catch something, so this is a galaxid of some sort. We'll uh, put it into a viewing box and see if we can hide. This is what we've caught using this kick net method. The fish there at the front of the right is in fact a Canterbury galaxis, uh, so that's Galaxis vulgaris. We actually caught a couple of Canterburys, and over on the left hand side you might be able to see there's an eel there, short fin eel. And we also caught a bully using this method. A slightly different method involves uh, using a hand net rather than a kick net. So this is the sort of net that people have when they're uh, bringing in trout or other larger fish. And this particular method is uh, a little bit unusual. It's been used by one of our master's research students who in particular was trying to get uh, upland bullies and he found that actually slashing down into the water you could actually capture larger upland bullies mainly in grasses and those sort of things along the side of uh, the stream. If you have uh, macrophytes or aquatic weeds then the net just gets caught up in those and you don't catch any fish. Our second method is also a fairly sort of low technology version this is night spotlighting and night spotlighting can be really useful for um, spotting and capturing the larger native fish in particular the galaxids. So now we've uh, gone to a site over on the west coast and this is what the stream looks like during the daytime. It's got some very deep pools and uh, quite a few rapids. You can't really see the fish very well spotlighting in rapids but if you've got some nice deep pools then often you can see the fish in those. I usually take a couple of different types of flashlights or torches out with me. On the left hand side I've got a headlamp just for getting between sites and getting through the bush and the trees and uh, then I've got a torch or flashlight which is a wood built and this these things are actually pretty powerful they're pretty good uh, little torches but then I've got my main flashlight or sorry my main um, spotlight out to the right there. With our spotlight we've concentrated on the pools and we're just moving the spotlight uh, quietly and slowly through the length of the pool trying to see if we can find a fish and then in this case we've we've found one which uh, looks like a banded kokapoo. Our third uh, capturing device is uh, a trap which we will have to set and leave out overnight. Uh, this is a G-Meadow trap and uh, my cat Tim of course has to come and have a look and make sure that I'm doing this properly. One of the things about the G-Meadow trap is that we can actually bait it and this is actually the bait of choice. This is Marmite which we often use and seems to work pretty well actually for encouraging some of our native fish to come into traps. Here's our G-Minnow 
uh, put together uh, with our bait inside it and so we're ready to deploy this out in the field and see if we can catch something. This is an urban stream which has a reasonable amount of overhanging vegetation and pretty slow water so this is a good sort of spot to put one of our G minnow traps and what we'll do is tuck it in underneath some of this overhanging vegetation and because our native fish are more active at night we'll leave it in overnight and then hopefully tomorrow morning we will have caught something with a bit of light. You definitely want to put these G minnows and a number of these sort of static traps in really slow water in the backwaters. If you do catch a fish you don't want the fish to end up being in moving water where it has to swim all night otherwise it'll probably be dead when you find it in the morning. Well that urban stream was fairly disappointing. Now we've moved out to the country and we've gone up to a valley known as the Waianiwaniwa Valley which happens to hold uh, one of the few decent sized populations of Canterbury mudfish, Neochano borosus. I've deployed uh, three Gimino traps here to try and see what we can catch overnight in the Waianiwaniwa. One aspect of trapping for Canterbury mudfish is that this particular stream does tend to get quite low dissolved oxygen and so what we have to do is leave the top of the g trap just suspended a little bit out of the water so that if necessary for Courtney Canterbury mudfish they can actually come up to the surface and actually uh, gulp air uh, from the surface inside the trap. And this has got about seven Canterbury mudfish in it so that was pretty good. Uh, it also has a couple of bullies which sort of slightly surprised me. Uh, they're both upland bullies so seven mudfish in one trap is a pretty good catch. Here's our Canterbury mudfish. This is uh, quite, a, quite a large one, reasonable size one. And there are seven in this tank. Now, at the present moment, you can only see one. In fact, the other six have actually buried down into the substrate. And if we have a look a little bit further down here, we'll see one of them is actually sitting down inside the cobbles, having decided that it's a bit safer down there than it is swimming around on the surface. I also caught quite a nice upland bully. So this is Gobiomorphus breviceps. One of the distinguishing features of upland bully are the orange spots around its face, eyes, mouth, etc. It doesn't look very orange in this water because we've got tea coloured water with dissolved organic carbon in it. But when you take the bully out of the water, the orange spots actually show up quite well. The fourth method I want to talk about is the fight net, which is quite a bit bigger than the G-Mino trap. And you can see here it's got this wall, this sort of net. And what happens is the fish, or in this case the cat, uh, travel along or hit the wall and then move along up into the net. Now the fish actually fit inside the net, unlike Tim, who's a little bit more discerning and wants to walk around the outside of the net. So Tim looks like he's pretty interested in these sort of nets. Unfortunately, I don't think Tim knows what a fish is because uh, this is the only fish that he's ever seen. Uh, so I don't think he's ever had to use a net to, to capture one. We've gone out to a local lake. This is Lake uh, Te Waihora or Lake Ellesmere. And I'm gonna set a couple of fight nets out here and I've chosen um, planting the, the wall of the fight net up on a sort of a peninsula that's sticking out into the lake and then the net itself is stretched out. Water clarity is always pretty poor here so we can't see the net. Hopefully uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll have something. Um, oh yeah, okay, so actually there's quite a lot going on in the net by the looks of it. 
quite a few eels in there, or big fish. So I'll drag them across to the bank and we will see if we can put them inside a bucket here. Well, I've actually caught a lot of eels in this net and the bucket and the bin I've got here are nowhere near big enough uh, to hold the number of fish that I've caught. So I will probably end up uh, tipping out a whole bunch of them and we'll have a look and just see what a few of them look like. That one net really caught a lot of eels. They, they were all eels. I'm not sure how many there were because they were pouring out so quickly. But it looks like we've got uh, maybe 20 plus eels in that net. Most of them pretty small and virtually all of these are short finished. A fifth method we might use is seine netting. This is usually a two or three person job at least. And we're doing this in standing water. Same netting's probably been done by humans for thousands of years. And when you're using this in slow water or lakes or river mouths, you can usually catch a lot of fish. Here's a team uh, doing a hapua survey, which was uh, organized for the regional council. They're putting out a seine net that's about 15 to 20 meters long and has 12 mil nesh. Here's the team pulling in a net. You can see there's a few people needed to uh, bring this in. And uh, the net is covering a pretty wide area. So we might expect there's gonna be one or two fish in here. Yeah, and so these regional council guys have caught quite a lot of fish. Looks like quite a few smelt and a number of other uh, larger fish here, mullet, etc. The final method I want to talk about in this uh, YouTube is electric fishing, which is really the type of technique that's sort of at the top end of the technology scale. You need to have an electric fishing machine and use of this is actually pretty limited. So you need to have uh, certified operators and machines which have been certified. Uh, they're really used for biomonitoring uh, by councils and consultants and research organisations and for research purposes. They're very effective. They certainly do catch a, a lot of different fish. Um, different species do react differently and the electric fishing technique really we only use during the daytime so we don't really ever use this at night because of the whole health and safety issues.